ready? For the Egg Timer Hour. Welcome. You're here with Brandon V. And Sugar Dave. We're back for episode number two. All are welcome. <laughs> All are welcome. Come into the light. What's that lady's name with that? Is oh. Like Fertilda or something? Fertilda. All are welcome. Come to the light. No. You said don't go into the light. All to all our way. You said don't go into the light. All our way. Caroline! Caroline! What is her name? <laughs> oh my goodness. It's Halloween. Who's ready for some spooky stuff? I'm Googling it, folks. Poultry Guys movie Short Lady. Short oh, Lady? That ought to trigger that something. narrow her down. Zelda Rubenstein. She looks like a Zelda. Is her? Who was she in the movie? She should have been Zelda Rubenstein. Tangina. That's her name, Tangina. Tangina. All are welcome. This house is clean. Sometimes people need help to get into the light. And other people, they don't know where to go into the light. And the light, it go into you. And it don't know. <laughs> That's a long ramble. <laughs> uh, it's been a, since our last show, had a lot of things happen. One being... Mr. Thomas Petty passing away. Yeah. That was a rough one. That was terrible. I had to listen to Wildflowers a few times through. The it's song or the whole, the, the whole thing. Yeah, it was a great album. And it I'm, hits hard. I can't, honestly, I can. the only thing I can compare it to is when Johnny Cash died. For me. Like Johnny well, Cash and Tom Petty. I mean, I, of course I, it sucked that Michael Jackson and Prince died, but when Tom Petty died, it was uh, well, when, more like a mourning than... Yeah. Hits close to home. There's so you don't realize. Well, I don't know. I you grow up with somebody like Tom Petty. He's just his songs are always there because they're so good. And then one day you realize it's like I guess I'm pretty big into Tom Petty. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it just happens because well, we there's... realized shortly after he passed that in our repertoire of covers we play quite there's a few a lot Tom of Petty. Them. We play what Walls, uh, Wildflowers. Mm hmm. Um. Uh, won't back down. Well, you know him better than me. I uh, counted the other day, and there was four or five. I mean, he can just write really easy to play, but spectacular songs. And he could write really complicated music. Well, yeah. I don't want to be a rock and or I don't want to be. <laughs> I want to be a rock and roll star. Do you know that one? I've heard it, yeah. That's an underrated one, in my opinion. Who I, else died? Uh, Gordy Howe died. Who? Gordy... Why does that sound so familiar? I'm probably saying his name wrong. From uh, the Tragically Hip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think I read that somewhere, actually. Yeah, we yeah, might have to record little... that because I don't think I got his name right. Anytime, anytime a musician that you care for passes, it's sad. But every once in a while, someone will pass who are just legendary and can never be duplicated or replaced. Well, that's the thing about uh, Gordy Howe's a freaking NHL guy. <laughs> Gord Downey, excuse ah. me, of the Tragically Hip died. You know, Gordy Thomas. Gordy Thomas, you know, he was. No, obviously, I'm not a Tragically Hip fan. Never claimed to be. But, in, when you know, it's kind of news that he, whenever he was diagnosed with this uh, brain cancer, he said, I'm going to do these shows and that's going to be it. And there's footage out there of him doing his last show. I don't know the name of the last song, but he's just standing there and he's just crying, holding that microphone. And it's just. Moving yeah, stuff. Yeah. I didn't know he had cancer. See, I just read about it. I didn't read a, the article. Those guys are from Canada and uh, had some hits in the eight, uh, 80s. Or no, they didn't have a big one until 95. They became a band in 84. I've heard their name, but I couldn't name one song or one accolade that they accomplished. Well, I think they're in the Canadian Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Hmm. That so, puts in mind Warren Zevon. Mm -hmm. the, his whole story like was it his leukemia it was some form of cancer i believe yeah like he went on dave letterman and they asked him if he had any advice and he said enjoy every sandwich that is one of the the best interview or best answers i've ever heard in an interview oh absolutely enjoy every second sandwich every second and every sandwich enjoy every sandwich second because they're yummy i'd never heard of him i'd heard of no. werewolves in london of course but yeah. i didn't know anything about him till he passed away i was one of those that was one of the occasions where i jumped on the bandwagon and yeah well i saw him on dave letterman too and we said i mean a lot of times i won't get into someone unless i see him somewhere and they seem cool oh yeah it's like if they come off as kind of humble and you know approachable i guess yeah. or personable 
as both are, you know, cocky assholes. I think <laughs> as humans, it's real, like you said, it's it's easy to, when you lose someone, to like, uh, there's something, Yeah, you know like I mean? people were posting stuff on Facebook, like, like here come the Tom Petty memes. Yeah. And it's like somebody posted, uh, here, here, yeah, here come the Tom Petty memes, and uh, you can't name two songs. I bet most people would be hard pressed to to name. Uh, I mean, everyone can think of at least two Tom Petty songs. I'd say everybody can think of three or four. Yeah, I'm sure there's people out there like, oh yeah, I know that song. Who but maybe not who? But yeah, there's. He's, he's just one of those catalog. that yeah. I don't think it's jumping on a bandwagon as much. I think it's more like you realize what you've lost once you've lost it. Right. Like Prince. Well, I have bought his is... albums before, but I haven't listened to him in years. When he passed, first thing I did was pulled up Morning Papers. I was like, yeah. man, that's a great <laughs> song. You know? So I think it just, it's not jumping on a bandwagon. It's just like, oh, man, Prince died. Yeah. It's just really looking back and missing it. It's anymore. There's a lot of. Uh, gone too soon people on my iPod. It's scary because the music we grew up like and we're now at the age where they are the ones that it's are classic rock. Away. It's it's very scary. Chris, Chris Cornell's gone. Scott Weiland's gone. Elaine Staley's been gone a long time. But here lately more and more. Yeah, it's it's very... Oh, this is going down a deep dark hole. We need to turn this around. I know. <laughs> well, on a... One thing to remember when you get down, though, is the music. That sounds yeah. cheesy as hell, but it's I don't care who you are. When that American girl comes on, the boom, yeah. boom, 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 It's down, like you down, can't do like, yeah. it. It'll make you groove, man. You can't be sad when that song comes on. A lot of his songs. They're the beast. They really are. So don't focus so much on the death. Focus on what they did with their lives. The legacy, what was left behind. Yes. This is what every musician, I guess, probably hopes to leave, some sort of musical legacy to... Oh, I'm sure. It's one of the things, like, uh, New Queens of the Stone Age, there's a song on there called Fortress, and that's one that's kind of... He said in interviews that that's one about his... Uh, kind of like just about that thing to his daughter. Oh, like... Like oh. this, yeah. You know, it's, it's just some words of wisdom in a song, I guess, yeah. kind of. And it goes the other route, like Credence. Every song they wrote was catchy. John mm -hmm. Fogerty said most of his songs, he just wanted to see his kids dance. Yeah, that's how they started. There's the yeah, others. Not but too many CCR songs you're not gonna move to. Yep. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> but anyway, back to it. Brandon brought up Halloween. Ooh, scariness! I, I can't wait. Yeah. Pumpkins. Halloween is a holiday I always am excited about. Not Well, yeah. I don't know why. Chocolate. I like chocolate. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I always look for a reason to celebrate chocolate in my holidays. I like going to haunted houses. I just like the whole... I don't like haunted houses. Uh, yeah, I know you don't. But I'll, I'll go through them. Yeah, I don't care. You went through them last year. It's like, I'm here. I'm not a pussy. Yeah. I'm going to go through that. <laughs> I talk real big, big and bad, but every time I go in, I'm usually begging for my life. <laughs> Please, I'm so sorry. Why are you doing this? I don't know what I did, but I'm so sorry. No, I always want to be in the middle, though. I don't like going through those things. I mean. Yeah, I'm usually in the front. <laughs> but like I said, once I get in, I'm the one that's like, oh, God, please be over. <laughs> I hate roller coasters, but I'll get on one just for, well, I guess because I don't want to look like a pussy. Because you're not like, a pussy. I'll show you. I'll, I'll show you. Nothing. <laughs> oh. So what's new in your world, David? Uh, not much of nothing. Just working and recording songs on my iPad and coming over here and doing radio with you, then coming over here and recording music with you. What was the last song you recorded on your iPad? Uh, I recorded In Heaven by the Pixies, Sunday evening. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Whenever you're in heaven, that makes, I don't know that one. Huh? I know the Talking Heads Heaven. That's what it made me think of. It's No, it's the one that's it's just a bass and... Frank Black, is that his name? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Frank Black singing. Well, they do it with the bass player, the girl. I'm going to Google that. I'm tired of talking about I'm stuff on the Googling radio. It. There's a song where the girl sings it, too. It's only like a minute 51. Oh, yeah. They said they went and saw the movie Eraserhead, which is a Oh, I was David just reading Lynch about that film. yesterday. Yeah, that was like his first movie. Yeah, I his think. first movie. They went and saw that, and that song is from that. One of the really? people comes out and, In heaven, everything is fine. And I was reading. I've never seen that movie, but I was reading about and what Frank it was Black about. Said they started covering it and uh -huh. playing it in bars, and then they said, you know, a lot of times 
bars you'll go and you'll play with four other bands. I said, one night they went and pretty much every band got up was play <laughs> played a version. They thought they were oh, so hip really? and like we're the only ones going to cover this. And every band in the bar scene was playing it. Yeah, that's those. That's supposed to be one of those movies you only watch once and you never watch it again because it's so I, I, difficult to get through. Is it old? I think wasn't it? Made yeah, like it's in like seventies or seventies. Seventy-seven, I think. Wasn't it black and white? Mm-hmm. On purpose or? Yeah, they had color mm-hmm. TV in the age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there had been some colored Andy Griffith <laughs> going before then. That's true. See, I, I don't know the history of television. The history of television. Tell us the history, David. Yeah, Why before don't that, you know? I covered a Power Bottom song a couple weeks ago. Power I think I played bottom. that one for you. See, it's going back to um, if someone's cool or not, if I'm going to dig their music, Power Bottom. That you can't find their stuff anywhere. Can you find it now? Yeah, they re they released re released it. Okay. Like when there were the allegation happened, they took all their music off every site like Spotify, YouTube, right. and but there were the lead singer. What's his name? Ben. Ben Hopkins. Hoskins. Hopkins. Yeah, it was uh, there was some uh, uh what was Accused it? Young sexual girls misconduct. No, I guess I think it was he was forcing himself. The allegation was he was forcing himself on women. Uh, and whatnot. So, and these yeah. guys are freaks, but they sure make good music. They really do. <laughs> the way I look at it, man, unless I was there, I've got—I I don't have an opinion. Cause right. Only that Ben guy and the women and God knows what happened. That's true. If they did it, they deserve all the bad things coming to them. Yeah, I the only thing I know about these guys is what I see on the internet and yeah. the music I hear. The music's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But when you see him, it's a trip, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, with the outrageous stage makeup and wearing bright, Glitter. literally sequenced yeah. dresses. and Lots of flamboyant makeup. I watched a lot of uh, live stuff of theirs. Right. Because you hear a studio, they might be horrible musicians. There's just two of them. But yeah, I watched. Well, when they play out, though, they'll have a bass player. and a, uh, okay. I think that they do all the stuff in the studio. Then uh-huh. you get a little backing band. But yeah, I've watched a lot of live videos, and they're just as good live as they were. Actually, there's sometimes when I want to listen to like some of their songs, like Ugly Cherries or um, Dairy Queen, uh-huh. I'll go to the NPR live video I found on YouTube and watch it instead of those just things to the are cool. Just the it's, little newsroom yes. songs, and it looks like they just have one microphone in front of them, but it's got to be microphones yeah. everywhere just on the side because that is some amazing sound. Probably quality. some rather expensive microphones. On I there, have I'm found. Sure. A plethora of bands that I really dig. A plethora? Just from going to NPR behind the desk. Do you know what a plethora is? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. He put me on the spot. Uh, Yes, I do, Brandon. That's from Three Amigos. I was doing some movie quotes. I'm not really putting it away. It is a plethora. Overabundance. (laughs) You used it right. Oh, I know. I did. I I couldn't spout out the definition. It's a good word. Plethora. Plethora. But yeah, go to NPR. I think it's called Behind the Desk. Behind the plethora. <laughs> and I promise you, you'll find some acts too. You're like, wow, I can't believe they're on there. Yeah, I've like seen... Um, big, yeah, what were you going to say? Big name acts. Uh, I think I might have... Was Queens on Stone Age there? I haven't seen that if they were. Hmm. I was thinking the son of a bitch guy. What's his name? Nathaniel Rachel yeah. from the Night Sweats. Night Sweats. Those guys are cool. I think they did that. <laughs> Ooh, apparently, they have contests. Like, I don't know if you send a video of your band playing or whatever, and if they like it. Oh, uh, that's cool. That That is really Maybe cool. this, maybe Mind Like Me should throw their hat in that ring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll win it. <laughs> Never take yourself too seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but, can you we, know, there, there's also, just to be fair, there's also a lot of stuff on there you listen to and you're like, Ooh. Some stinkers. <laughs> but that's just my opinion, you know. Right. Everybody likes different things. No. Everyone likes the same thing. That's what kills me. Like when you have people that are like, You like Queens of Stone Age, they suck. Yeah. Well, they don't suck to me, man. Yeah. Kiss my ass. <laughs> I like Power Bottom and they're sexual like, predators. <laughs> I, I don't like yeah. I don't like uh what are they called? Five finger death punch. Uh, this girl I work with loves them, and if you ride in her car with her to lunch, like she's like, I put you in the first, and I'm like, this <laughs> makes me want to throw up. But I don't think I right. will never say they suck. So I don't. Right. Just because I don't like them, don't it's mean not they your suck. Cup of tea. 
You know what I mean? Just because they're not your cup of tea doesn't mean they suck and you should put them down. It's people that are judgy like that. I would love to see someone be like, well, here's a guitar. Go at it. Yeah. Do better. Let's see what you can do. I'll never forget. There's people that'll heckle you like that. That's happened to us before. It's not fun being heckled, but we We've been do? heckled? Yeah. I remember like, don't ever play that again. Someone shouting <laughs> that. But I don't remember. Don't ever play that again. It's Tiny Disc. Yeah, that's it. Tiny Disc concert. On NPR. Yeah, check it out. Well, screw them. You're on WP3W Radio. Don't go to NPR. First NPR. one I see is Randy Newman. NPR. Welcome to NPR. <laughs> left foot, right foot, <laughs> left foot. But you uh, got a friend. That sounds like Bob Dylan kind of. Yeah, they got a lot of cool folks on here. Jason Isbell. Mm-hmm. Alt-J. Why is that? Ooh, Steve Martin did one. That'd be neat That's to see. That's awesome. I love Steve Martin. Atheists ain't got no songs. <laughs> What's been going on with you? We get sidetracked, folks. You have to bear with us. Work, work, and more work. I'm just happy to be back on the egg timer hour. Oh, me too. I'm having a blast. Back with you out there in radio land, wherever you may be. So this is a new radio station, new television show. Yep, in its infancy. We hope people are listening to our broadcast. We've been talking to um, Buddy Verse. Big Daddy Roland, and he's we're hoping to eventually have live capabilities. Oh, yes. So we could go live and have people call in. As in this is pre-recorded. Because we're going to do whatever <laughs> we want. So we may go live one week and next have a recorded one, next have a special guest. And might not even do one one week. Yeah. Because this is just a sad thing. We hope you like it. That you're studying hard over there. What are you the studying? The beauty on? of it. I'm looking. I'm still looking still at bands. Still looking at NPR. Still looking at NPR bands. Just like wow. Oh, Gucci Mane. Gucci Mane. So for those <laughs> of you just tuning in, this is Brandon V and Sugar Dave of Mine Like Me. So David, we don't know too much about you yet. That's true. Where and when did you decide that you were really into music in a big way? Uh, gosh, when I was little. I remember kind of being there. very small, and my mom was always the one that would be listening to, like, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. <laughs> yes. And we'd be driving down the road. I'd be like, what? I distinctly remember that song. I'd be like, Ugh. oh, God, this is horrible. <laughs> you know? Because you just instinctively don't like what your parents like, I think. Well, but it quickly turned into, like, I absolutely adore Roy Orbison. He's one of my favorite art, mm-hmm. all-time artists. And I, when I was a kid, though, I was like, oh, gosh. I don't know if it's partially reminiscent like now john prine's another one of my favorite artists i remember when i was in college my buddy willie would play john prine records and i'd be like it sounded like to me and i hated it and shortly after college i was like man i want a john prine record looking back i probably just like i miss my buddy willie you know i lived with him all the you know and i went and bought john prine loved him ever since well it's good to have things that grow on you like that i love i know every word to every song john prine's ever done that's now, awesome. but you know, so, but I've always liked music and my dad from a very early age, he went through a spell where he made me and my sister play guitar. And, you know, even if we didn't want to, but, <laughs> that's not fun. Yeah. You're going to play this. Yep. Whether you, you like it or going, not. You are going to play guitar. And I remember I hadn't played long and I started writing songs. Then later on, I wanted to pursue guitar and my mom got me guitar lessons I took guitar lessons not very long, and I don't mean this in any conceited way. Of course, I couldn't hear Slash playing a solo and immediately play it, but it got very quickly where I could hear a song and figure out what chords were in the song and figure it out myself. So I stopped taking lessons. (laughs) So it was just immediately awesome. I was just immediately a savant. I I knew it all. It was just there under my fingertips. It was like it was a cha- I was just channeling it. No, but it got to where like I could hear uh, knocking on heaven's door and, and you know mess around and be like that's G C and D yeah. and A minor um, and A minor. <laughs> yeah, and you know from that point that's when I loved it. Then in high school, started playing in bands. So then, when did you actually pick up the guitar? God, I'd probably say eight, and shortly after. I played guitar for quite a few years, probably 12, 13 years. So you picked it up at eight? Yeah. And I played for until I was probably 18 or 19, like a lot. 
Then I'm, I'll never forget my buddy Brian Campbell, pork chops. Pork chops. He, uh, <laughs> we were at a pool hall one night and I was playing guitar there. And he said he wanted to learn how to play guitar. It seemed like two, three months, maybe six at the most passed. And he was playing Red House behind his back <laughs> by Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> you know, some some cats are just born right. to play music. Plus, he had a history. He played saxophone in the school band his whole life. I don't know if that transposed over from yeah, carried the over music a theory and all that stuff he learned carried over. Cause sure it didn't hurt. He was like a virtuo- virtuoso. <laughs> Easy for you to say. In <laughs> no time. And I remember being like, screw this, I'm playing drums. <laughs> my dad always had drums sitting in my house, and I just started banging on the drums. And next thing you know, I was in a band with him. So what, you started drums when you were? I was pretty old. I was 18, 19, something 18, like that. 18, 19, starting mm-hmm. on drums. Drums are hard. That's something I can't play really at all. Like if I can keep an ACDC beat going, then I'm I'm rocking on. Well, I mean, like I was always interested in being in bands and playing music, but I was my what speed was like when I come around. Da, 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 da. <laughs> right, I was sitting there. Like, right. There's a red house over yonder. Well, with this guitar over about the blues. I mean, the blues is just the you you got to have that or you don't. I mean, there's some virtuosos yeah. out there that don't even have that. That's true. So I couldn't compete. What could I? Okay, you play Red House, and I'll hop up and play when I come around. So I was like, I'm going to play drums, and I'm going to be your backing well, guy. I love the blues. And he's still amazing to this day. Yeah. He still plays. He's amazing. You, you can only play those same three chords so long. I love playing the blues, but I'm not good at it. But I enjoy it. Yeah. But there's, I mean, there's so many people that have already done it and done it so well. Why even try? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is you could you could be working on something more original and something something else. Well, there, I think there's a way to do it though, like um, something that hit me just the other day. I've always loved the song "Revolution." I think it's yeah, it's brilliantly written. Yeah, I'm not saying there aren't it hit great me. songs I like, aren't blues. I, I I didn't think I knew how to play the blues properly uh-huh. till the other day. I was like, oh my god, "Revolution" is just the blues. Yeah. Dun, 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 mm-hmm. dun, dun, dun. Same. But it's just like the characteristics yeah. of uh, just the way George Harrison played a guitar, and oh, and, absolutely. And each one of them, it's, it's just less is more. Everyone has their own little take on the blues, and it's always cool if you can kind of. You're not going to reinvent the blues, I don't think. But no, to to try and the mask last it a person little. I can think of, and I know you're not the biggest fan, who took the blues and made something new out of it was Jack White that I can think of. Yeah, I like Jack White, all right. I know but you read an interview that ticked you off, didn't you? What was it? I don't Something know. Something about him comparing himself to Jay-Z. No, what was that? The, he was talking about a, I think it's been resolved since, there's some kind of supposed feud between him and Dan Auerbach of the Black Keys. Mm. And like they were, you got something like about Dan Auerbach. Or something. I, I guess. He just comes off a little weird to me yeah. sometimes. But yeah, he goes back to if you if you seem like an asshole or not. Maybe I'm too judgy. Maybe I just need to. I like his music. Love his music. Yeah, he's he's talented. But he's the last person I can think of in our generation that has came out and used the blues to his advantage, I guess right. you could say. Well, I don't know. John Mayer. Well, they probably came out around the same time, didn't they? Yeah. But when you listen to a, a Jack White blues, it's, it's, it's not like no. it's not like a traditional blues. Like off the album Blunderbusters that I'm shaking. Yeah. Yeah. That's a blues song, and it's... That one's, if there's one in that same kind of vein, it's got to be that one. Yeah. But he has really cool guitar tone. Oh, yeah. And he can play. Yeah. There's some songs that he, he, he can flat out play a guitar. And I mean, the dude, I made Tasco guitars worth something, so... <laughs> Is that what he played? I thought he played like Sears. There, he's played, yeah, a few of them like that. Like Airline. Mm-hmm. He made the Supro... So yeah, if you can take a guitar from obscurity to to value and collectability, I you're not doing anything wrong, I don't think. Well, yeah. I was going to say if you get your own signature anything, drumsticks, but that's not the case. Yeah. Well, he just took of... he took this old thing that now people, people would regard as crappy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know last time I looked at a Super o guitar, it was like 8.99. Yeah. I'm sure and those his... amps are ridiculous as well. Uh, well, the amps are have always been cool, but Uh-huh. I'd say those guitars got it definitely got an increase from him. Oh yeah, there. Were, Josh Homme even did that with an Ovation guitar. I can't think of the name of it. What used the Ovation and? Yeah, and then pretty much made the value skyrocket. I can see that. 
Just well, uh, I guess whenever there, there's a new sound that kind of comes along and that people zero in on the instrument they use, I guess, to get that sound. I and can't then, think of the guy's name. The lead singer from Muse, Matt Bellamy? I think so. But, I mean, he he used those guitars with a built-in... Looks like the, it's, it looks like it's got an iPad in your guitar. Yeah. And, like, it's, like, touch-sensitive. Like, those whoa, guitars whoa, whoa, are whoa, really whoa, cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And those things are, like, six, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. And I'm sure that has something to do... And he's got his own signature. I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I was Bellamy. trying to think of who made that. Um... It's a very odd name. We need an internet guy in here to get on this. Manson Guitar Works? Yeah. And I mean, those are There's some a court. Oh, guitars. Court. Court NBC One. Um, Manson Guitars. Does it say price? Expensive. <laughs> it doesn't say. Uh, I'm, uh, my internet's slow. But yeah. I'm sure with all the electronics and stuff, it it'd be expensive anyway. It's 479 pounds, it looks like. <laughs> That's, uh, we, for your for our UK listeners, I don't know what that is. <laughs> 7, Quick, 000, Google seven thousand dollars on reverb. Wow. Yeah. See. Used seven thousand dollars. Of course, that's just what somebody's asking for. It. Who knows. I guess it's all in the eye of the beholder. But there's cheaper ones, but they don't have the the little pad on it. This one has the pad. Oh, if there's a guitar I was obsessed with and I had the money, I wouldn't care. Well, yeah. I've always wanted a Great White Falcon. And good luck getting a they cheap are, one of those. They're really expensive. And, of course, I'm, what I'm saying is I don't have money. But if I did, <laughs> if I had an extra $4,000, I'd Let's start want. a GoFundMe. People <laughs> go to GoFund David's Great White Falcon fund. Buy me a guitar. Make Buy me smile. a guitar. <laughs> Please. Uh, so what would be the first song you'd play on your new Gretsch White Falcon? If I got a Gretsch White Falcon, what would be the first song I'd the play? The first thing you play on it. Oh, gosh. Doesn't have to even be a song. What would be the first chord? <laughs> It'd probably be in heaven, because I'm bad about, like, yeah. I, I really learn a song right before I record it. <laughs> I learn the crap out of it, so I can play it backwards and forwards, but... And then I'll pick a new one, and then I get obsessed with that one. Yeah. Same way when we write songs. Like, when we... Wrote Hannibal and recorded it. Anytime I picked up a guitar, I do 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 do. Just gotta play that riff over and over. Oh yeah. Just depends whatever you're so into. Usually, what song I'm focused on at the time, I play the crap out of it. Where I, when you hit record, like it's not even you're not even really thinking about playing it. Mm-hmm. That's that's just my process for doing it. Which yours is? Record. Eh, nah, record. Nah, record. Eh, nah. I can do it again. <laughs> Give me another one. I got it this time. Uh, well, it's like I you get an idea of it and it's. I don't know. It comes down to an execution, I think, and I'd rather just... You can play something over and over, but it doesn't really matter till you get it right and get it on, oh, absolutely. on the tape, if that makes any sense at all. I have the hardest time with, even though I learn it backwards and forwards, playing in time is a different story. Yeah, that's I, what that's I mean. I can get I'm the idea, I can hear how it's supposed yeah. to go, and then you gotta you actually got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you got to play it. Because once you got right. that metronome in your ear going... It's a whole different ball game well, yeah. just playing it without it. It really is. That always keeps me on point. I like the metronome in my life, but I'm sort of a perfectionist, so trying to get away from that so much. But having a metronome when you're recording makes it easier to cut and well, splice and move. Getting away from it's good, but you also, like, you, the you most gotta important have thing it. is being in time. Yeah, you need to have it internally anyway. I promise you, any song that's on the radio, if they re-recorded it and it wasn't in time, well, it that's would the problem. not be as good. Everything is so perfect now if it's on the radio. Everything's just been, like, I was uh, reading or watching a video or something about how drummers aren't even used in recording sessions anymore. Yeah. If they're used at all, they're used for maybe a few measures and then they just loop the rest. Oh yeah, absolutely. So that's where the human element gets lost. Oh, cuz things, and things not, aren't made to line up perfectly. I'm but, not trying to knock an entire genre, but like pop music nowadays, the artist probably has very little to do with it. Well, that. oh yeah, it's any more, music you hear on most pop radio now is, is written by 40 people and recorded by 80 people. <laughs> and, uh, and all they did was come in and sing and they ran it through auto-tune and yeah. a bunch of different filters. And it's perfect. Yep. And here it is. That's what you call over-polished. Yeah, over-polished. But it's what apparently sells. But, but you know, I will say this. Who knows what this. sells? I, what? 
I've seen my wife made me watch a Lady Gaga documentary on Netflix. You give that chick a guitar and a microphone. Well, she's, yeah, she's, she's absolutely she's, talented. She's pretty good. But you can't. I'm not saying that there's I, these people aren't talented. It's just that. Oh yeah, I'm not generalizing the whole pop. I'm not saying they are not. I talented. think the the idea of the artist has been greatly skewed, and that's a word that gets tossed around so yeah. easily. Everyone's a freaking artist. People on The Voice and American Idol, they're artists singing cover songs. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. you want to hear, uh, I don't know, Islands in the... <laughs> Stream? <laughs> yeah, if you want to hear that, why not just pull up Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton singing Absolutely. that song? Because no one ever did it better yeah. than that. There is times, though, that I do enjoy a good cover if it's done right. Yeah. If someone makes it By own. another artist, someone yeah. who's had some... Because who's who really buys these records from people from American Idol and from The Voice or whatever I'm singing show it is? Surely someone does, or they wouldn't do it. They're making money somehow. Making money on the singles and the advertising, yeah. I guess, because they always have like an iTunes single for whoever's staying on the show. Yeah, I'm sure they're. I'm sure they make money, or they they want to. Well, it. yeah, obviously. Yeah. I read something Dave Grohl said about that, like. Yeah, about getting in the garage and playing the, the song. Getting in the garage and actually but, practicing. But why do that whenever what people really want? Which, if there's any, if you want any kind of substance, you're going to get in that garage and okay. you're going to play with other people and you're going to do it. And if you, if you just in it for the money, if I could go sing to Hollywood, good, get an agent, and rock on, I guess. Even if I could <laughs> sing good, I I couldn't imagine doing a show like American Idol. Yeah, because well, it's instant fame. It's boom, there you are. You've yeah. arrived, at least for 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, it's short-lived. Mm -hmm. uh, someone on my Facebook the other day posted a picture of, or a little video of someone that had been on The Voice or one of those shows. Yeah. And it, they were at a bar in, like, Montana and just happened to run into... Yeah. That guy was probably playing a gig for 500 bucks. Like, who yeah. remembers Soul Patrol? Soul Patrol! Woo! You know, that's gone on longer than your... Way before that. Wasn't there, like, a MTV had, like... And made boy bands, and it was a television show. And well, there, yeah, there's something like that. Like well, Lifehouse what was the Ed McMahon show? Star Search. Star Search. Where it was, well, it was usually, there's different genres and stuff, and they'd yeah. have different competitors well, they, come in, and people went. They'd have dogs could, jumping through hoops. Yeah. And, yeah, so it's been around longer it's than more American of a variety Idol, show. It's mindless entertainment that for the masses right. that people. No substance, spoon. hollow. Yeah. So that's that's what we're working for. Uh, you know the stuff the the part about that kind of stuff that I can't stand is the sob stories, which I hate. That well, yeah, everybody every loves a good one. Starts yeah. out with my mom died when I was three. Yeah, you won't find one like hey, I just like singing. Yeah, I just like to come out here and entertain y'all. How about that? <laughs> I just want to be a star. Man, all... Why does everybody want to air their dirty laundry to millions of people? I lost my big toe in a horrible mowing yeah. accident when I was twelve. <laughs> <laughs> and I just always said, I'm going to make it. I'm going to prove that this one toed son of a bitch can make something of himself. <laughs> Why does that have to be so dramatic? Just freaking sing. Yeah, just go out there and sing and be original. What's yes. wrong with writing an original thing? Which I love playing a cover, but you can pull up your phone, whatever you got on you, and there you go. If you really want to hear something, there I it don't is. have a problem with the judges that do that show. They're all. That's their job. You can't, I mean, yeah, you can't knock them. Mm -hmm. Like we said earlier, let's see you do it better. Yeah. If, if yeah. I got something Touché. to say against, you know, if I got something against Blake Shelton on The Voice and you don't see me up there hosting right. it, it's, I don't know how hard his job is. <laughs> it's probably pretty hard. Probably a lot of demands. Well, sure. You know, But so. there are people that do it that are able to have some substance, I think, that don't. Oh, yeah. My wife watches that stuff. And sometimes just like out of my peripheral vision, I'll catch something or hear something and be like, damn, they're good. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the time, I'm oh, like, oh, yeah. Man. And those people are talented yeah. beyond a shadow of a doubt. Well, once you have a competition to search for an actual artist where you, they write the song and they sing the song and they let people decide, I guess. Have a show like where you go to local garages and, hey, can we film you hmm. for a second? Or just, play you know, for us. or just start a band and just play and who cares yeah. if you're famous or not? Absolutely. It's not real anyway. Do it for fun. <laughs> I'm telling you. That's the only time that it actually works out is when you, you don't worry about who, who cares about this thing I wrote. And Back when in the days when we were the Fuzzy Duck the house band and we were playing at all those places. Playing in dives. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get it twisted and think me and Brandon's like, any day now. Then it was going to break our waves coming in. 
a big shot Hollywood <laughs> producer is going to walk into Ironton, Ohio, and hear us and have to have us. Of course not. It was just fun to play. Right. You were with your friends, and you were up on stage, and they'd give you free beer. It was just a blast. You were hammered. Yeah. Now that we're older, it's like, I can't stay out of the bar till 2 in the morning. No. <laughs> you know, but. Like after, when you get in your 30s, it's hard to just drink and lose your mind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's a lot of work, and you gotta we got to work the next day. And, yeah, I'm not in my on. 20s anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, so, yeah, it's that's another issue I have with American Idol, because I think a lot of people that go on that are like, don't care about well, that the show art was, of music. It's it just, was supposed to be done, and now it's back. Is that right? Oh, I don't know. Something like that. I know the voice is still going strong. Yeah. They have a season, a new season every other week. Yeah, <laughs> different judges every year. I think I haven't watched it in a while. Last time I, my wife was watching it and me paying attention was when CeeLo Green was on it. It's been a while, I think. Yeah. It's just, I watched, I watched cool. Jeopardy and then the voice comes on and then it's just, it's just there. Yeah. <laughs> CeeLo's cool. Like, Where'd my Alex Trebek go and who are these empty people on my television? You know, someone, uh, my buddy Ben and me were talking last night. Just out of the blue, he messaged me on Facebook and said, Serve the Servants is my favorite song of all time, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> and I messaged back, just thinking about Dave Grohl talking, uh -huh. got me thinking about this, and I messaged back, uh, what do you think would it would be like if, he, if Kurt was still here? I was actually thinking about that very same thing. When? Yesterday? Recently, uh, yeah. And, I, and we chatted about that, and sorry folks. I know I'm sidetracking awful, but just thinking about Dave Grohl got me thinking about my conversation with my buddy Ben. I think he would be still very musically inclined, but well, yeah. I think it'd be a whole different direction than. Well, he was talking. It was, I the way I always understood it was that Nirvana was Michael definitely Stipe. over. Yeah, he was going to yeah. do a record with Michael Stipe, and. Well, look at Unplugged. That was a far cry from. Never but who mind. knows? He might have uh, even went on and recorded a record with Timbaland, like Chris Cornell did. I mean, I never he did it. it. Yep. I never would have in a million years been like. When the Blue album from Weezer came out, I never in a million years thought they would start produce like the greatest man that ever lived and all mm -hmm. that stuff. That was like, no, they would never record like right. pop songs with rappers on it, you know, and all this stuff. But some people make some moves, and I'm not knocking you. it. Right. I, I enjoy well, it. Well, the. The Chris Cornell Timbaland thing to me was so. Was that the one that had Billy Jean on it? The album. No, that was the album before that one. Okay. That had Billy Jean on it. Okay. The Timbaland record "Scream" uh, had, I think, the only song I ever heard him do like acoustically off that was "Ground Zero." But I saw him on like an ABC special, like a fashion show with pussycat dolls and i was like what where's chris cornell and what have you done with them because <laughs> he was on this and he comes out singing that. a song or whatever with timbaland yeah. um did you enjoy it no oh like, no i, like, I didn't i think i might have listened to maybe a few seconds of each song and i was like i don't want nothing to do with that yeah but that was that was his thing i'm glad he felt he needed to well, do yeah, it he enjoyed it yeah like we talked, but then like Queens of the Stone Age come out and they put out a new record produced by Mark Ronson, mm -hmm. who's that's I mean he's hit, he's he's, he's what's in right now he's done records for uh, Paul McCartney yeah that's the only one I could think of right now he's Lady Gaga um, oh yeah he was in that documentary uh, yeah, Bruno yeah. Mars mm -hmm. he's done all kinds of like hip records now like he's the, he's the guy right now but for Queens to do it it's not so so weird because. I mean, well, I've Josh Homme's always looking for a reason, I think, to say, well, why not do that? I've listened to the new Queens record, though. He don't have Timbaland coming out and rapping. No, you know what I mean? No, it's, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, it's a it's a different a sounding different, record yeah. for them, but it's still, it's still got something to like about the band, but it's a very different sound, that's for sure. But it's not like, because I think I read Chris Cornell and Timberland were uh, staying up three, four in the morning writing yeah. the shit on that record. I think for any artist... It, and this is just speculation. Artists that reach that level of fame, it has to be hard. Because it's easy to write heartfelt, emotional songs when you're playing bars every night and got no money and living in a van like Chris Cornell, right. I'm sure, did for years. But then after years of being so successful and have people, think of anybody in Hollywood right now probably gets their ass kissed well, from the moment they wake up. When the that record came out, 
when did that record come out? He had done Euphoria Morning, I think, around 99 or 2000. But um, you know what I mean, though? That you get your ass kissed and told how wonderful you are all day long. I'm sure. He's probably making that, and his everybody in his life like, this is amazing. Because this is, his, I mean, yeah, everything he's done is amazing, except Scream. <laughs> it was released in 2009. And then after that, that's whenever Soundgarden got yeah. back together. Thank God. And again, this is just our opinion. We're not saying he's not talented because of course he was but yeah just, I don't know if it's just a record I wasn't crazy yeah. about I mean one out of however many you, not though. bad his what is it sometimes things will, that are bizarre will grow on you yeah like Scott Wayland his or Wyland Wyland's, Wyland's what I say <laughs> yeah but his solo record it came out and I was like what is this yeah. next thing you know I it's absolutely it's still love out it. there I, I listen to it every now and again but it's some of the stuff on it's hard to listen to I could see Kurt going in a direction Pulling off something similar to what Scott did. Just something out there. Maybe. Who knows? But who I knows? We could I'm, both be wrong. He could have right. just played grunge punk he rock. Come, or come out and start doing blues records. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, it's, that was another one gone. That one hurt, too. I I don't care what anyone says. I adored Nirvana. I think so many people from our generation definitely did. There's a lot of people. I hear it a lot. Like, they sucked. I'm like, you are crazy. They are very yeah, talented I even remember people saying, like, isn't Dave Grohl, like, not that good of a drummer? I'm like, what? It's like, <laughs> you're a drummer. You try and play like him. Then. Yeah, here, you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here's some drumsticks. Have at it. Here's that. Let <laughs> me play this song. Now, like, do, yeah, you do, do that. You record. Yeah. <laughs> you play Keith Moon one time. I'm like, just do that. Yeah, just do. <laughs> just play like Keith Moon. Why not just do that? <laughs> it's like, okay, Brandon. Just try that on. It's so simple. It's so simple. Just <laughs> Keith Moon. Go. Why did I ever think of this? So I'll just play like Keith Moon. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, you're going to, okay, I get it. Oh, I got you. Play I'll just like, do this. Play like the best drummer that ever lived. Got, got you. <laughs> <laughs> Hit go. Hit go. I'm ready. <laughs> Seriously, why Why can't you? <laughs> but yeah, Dave Grohl is one of And Kurt, I'm telling you, that was, that guy was a talented musician. Well, he could play guitar pretty decent. Yeah, well, he could write. Yeah. It goes back to originality, and there's, and there's nobody that sounded like that. He was the, that I know of, him and the lead singer of the Toadies, they are the feedback experts. Kurt mm-hmm. Cobain could get some guitar sounds from his feedback, but it's like, how is he doing that? Yeah. I was listening to Turnaround today, the Devo cover on Incesticide. Yeah. That song, that there's, they don't have another song where the guitar actually sounds like that, I don't think. Like Where's the that? tone of it's kind of weird. What song is it that's like, what is wrong with me? It's on in utero. Is it very ape? No. You just milk it. You just the feedback at the beginning of that song. I'm like, what? How the hell was he producing that sound? Well, the 2013 remix version of that record. Have you listened to that? Oh yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I like hearing stuff where they tweak stuff a little bit differently. You know, my favorite Nirvana thing probably ever was about the box set. God, with the lights out? Yeah, with the lights out. And on the DVD, there was a video Seasons of them doing Sun. Seasons of the Sun. I watched that last night, too. That brought so a I tear put to Terry, my eye. Terry Jacks did that first, I guess. Is that right? I'm not sure. Terry Jacks, I'm 99% sure. But it, Did it somebody else record that, too? Beautiful. Hmm? Did somebody else record that? Oh, I'm sure. Like, make it, or was Terry Jacks like the guy that made it famous? You know, I don't know. It looks like it. It's like, yeah. But yeah, seeing that, I highly recommend just take a second, get on YouTube and Google Nirvana Seasons in the Sun. Very, and you could tell just by the, it wasn't meant seriously. They weren't Yeah, trying to it was just like record. they were just in a room, yeah, just he's around. playing the drums and singing the song. And it's beautiful. Just because it's one of those songs too that when people hear it, they're just like. <laughs> you know, I didn't really know the words till that Nirvana. Yeah. Like I didn't know it said, goodbye, papa, it's hard to die. No doubt. <laughs> you know? It's pretty heavy stuff. Yeah, it really is. But yeah, definitely definitely check it out. I bet you they've still got tons of unreleased stuff in Kurt's like vault or whatever. Probably. I always get a little aggravated with their re releases because it's they'll put one song it's, on it. Yeah, it's like a whole bunch of more of the same and then there's like some demos that sound yeah. there's not, element of greed. Right. Tupac is still putting out records. They're still <laughs> making like Still making Tupac you know, records. I saw something the other day. Eminem with two featuring Tupac. There's just it's because he's still alive. 
Yeah, that, that's very true. <laughs> but you know, th- probably countless hours they just hit record and he'd freestyle or whatever. Right. They can that that will happen. Oh, I guarantee we'll never hear all the Prince stuff. Oh no, he's, dude's got a vault. Well, wasn't he? He was real particular about like ownership, right? Oh yeah. So he he I I don't know. I'm sure it's comes down to what's in his will and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, well, the know. estate will get to the and There was well, even when Jimi Hendrix died, there was all kinds of problems with his estate and music and oh, yeah. the rights to it. It's yeah. So it's like, somebody's legacy. I mean, if, put when it Tupac there. passed, right? If his mom was made the head of his estate, I she's she the one was. who's really selling all these songs right. and re-releasing them. So in other words, she's making a killing. Because I think I read something the other day, like uh, Francis Bean Cobain gets. Something like a, uh, I want to say hundred plus grand in uh, residuals, like a month. Um, I'm gonna have to Google that. So she said for life. I read something about her recently. Something that says she spends two hundred a month, <laughs> earns a hundred G a month from father's estate, I've according to it. NY Daily News. He's probably worth two hundred million. Google Kurt Cobain net worth if you don't care. And try not to take all day, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'd say there's a lot of money there. His estate, well, yeah, it's Nirvana. It's two hundred million. There's I always heard that that was kind of a point of uh, contention because there was a point where Kurt was like, "Since I write these songs, I need to, I want more money." So Dave Girl got paid like a mm-hmm. third of what he got paid. So, so I don't know how that all worked out, but wouldn't that suck? Hmm? That's that's what sucks about m- music as a commodity. Once there's money involved, it gets a little iffy. I think if you view it as a business, that's okay. But if you view it as a band, that's horrible. Right. And Nirvana, I consider them a band. Like if you and me were thrown together to play music by like, hey, let's make money off this. Right. That's different than you well, and me are friends and we're in a band together. Anytime you, you do something for money like that too, it's I don't think you're going to find it. I think the only yeah. time it happens is when you, you least expect it and you're just doing it because it's So who do you about. think is the deciding factor if like they keep releasing Nirvana records and putting one more extra song on it? You think it's Dave Grohl? or? Courtney? I think it comes down to Courtney, Dave, and Chris. So they all three mm-hmm. have to mutually I, agree? The way I understand it. I didn't it. know if Kurt's mom had anything to do with it. Yeah. She might. I think she does. Uh, the brand of Kurt Cobain, according to CNBC.com, you want to guess? Net worth? I'm going to say 150 to 200. 450 million. Whoa. <laughs> That's right. That doesn't mean there's 450 that million was in the bank, though. Right. But still. That's still good. <laughs> I read somewhere recently about uh, the guitar he used for Unplugged. Mm-hmm. Like when Francis Bean. Was oh, engaged, her boyfriend. She gave it to her her fiance, fiance. Yeah, yeah. And he still got it and won't give it back. And was like, no, you can't have this. It's like, I feel like Indiana Jones when I hear that. It belongs in a museum. <laughs> but if it was me, I don't know if I'd give it up either. I think I'd have to kick some ass, someone's ass with my daddy's guitar. <laughs> I think I'd have to kick some ass. You call Shanks and Ben up. Yeah. Guys, we need to go. We got another guitar we got to get. <laughs> Sons of bitches stealing my daddy's legacy. How dare they? Uh, but yeah, I, I think uh, I'm surprised that guy hasn't been dealt with. <laughs> Who knows if he might happen now? Maybe they, they got my, they hush, got enough hush. money to hire some thugs yeah. to get the guitar back. Uh, let's just put it this way: I would have the guitar back. By the <laughs> that was, I'm not knocking the, her. Who love Francis? Her yeah, but that was dumb anyway. Well, but her, love will make her you stuff. Do, I love guess will make you do dumb stuff. Yeah, but who knows, was she just like? Here's this thing sitting in the corner. Kurt Cobain was my daddy, and I met the woman of my dreams. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. Well, here, watch, take this. Yeah, <laughs> don't touch it. Don't look directly at it. No, you can't touch this one. This one's not meant to be Love played. Love you, on but stay away. <laughs> That's daddies. <laughs> oh my God, we have went off the rails. <laughs> Precious. <laughs> That was a Martin, right? And he had it all hacked up and pickups put in it and all that stuff. Maybe. I think so. Was it? We're going to have to Google something else. I'm pretty sure it was a Martin. Probably a three, $4,000 guitar before he had it hacked up and touched it. It was flipped upside down. Yeah, he was a left-hander. Martin D18E, 1959. Yeah, probably worth quite a bit. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty rare guitar. And that Unplugged record's just amazing. 
Oh, yeah, from start to finish. Yeah. I remember the first time I saw it, that moment where he takes a breath on Where Did You Sleep Last Night. Yeah, and looks right in the camera. I was like chills, yeah. tears, all the whole nine See, I wasn't on the Nirvana train until that Unplugged show. See, I remember I was staying on out with Roland when we watched that, and they played um, Roland's dad, Doug, heard that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, that's the original song, right? And he played in the Mines for us. Oh. Was it Oak Ridge Boys? There's Maybe. been so many people. But he played that. as that version, because uh-huh. you know, it's a real old song, but it was in the Mines, where mm-hmm. the sun never shines, yeah. but. That would make more sense than the pines. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the mines where the sun. Yeah. Sun when the shine. cold wind blows. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. But wow, I'd never heard that before. Yeah. the the. Well, I'd never heard the mines. I knew it was an old, 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 old song. Yeah, it's in the mines originally. But they tweaked some of the words and someone that covered it changed it to pines. I don't mm-hmm. know if it was Nirvana or a band before them. It might have been Lead Belly, like, yeah. like he says. Plateau, the Meat Puppets covers with the Meat Puppets. Yeah. Those are really cool. Oh, and hands down, I love the Nudro version, but uh, Penny Roll T. No, um, shoot, all apologies. Oh yeah, the yeah. unplugged version was beautiful. Yeah, it does really blow the album version out of the water. It, it really does. That was meant to be an acoustic song with just one that cello girl that played on it or whatever. Mm-hmm. Perfection. It don't get no better than that. If I have beautiful. a choice, if I've got both, which I do have both on my phone, I always opt for the unplugged version. <laughs> Not this sucky version. Play the good one. Oh, I don't know about you, but I need to pee. Oh, Davey got a pee pee. I got a pee pee. Let's take a little break. You're listening to The Mind Like Me Egg Timer Hour on, on WP3W, No Restrictions Radio. Rock! We just took a little pee break, but we back now. Little pee pee break. Back with Brandon V and Sugar Dave, back on The Mind Like Me Egg Timer Hour. We're so glad you're with us. Episode number two. Dave, getting back to you, huh? what was your first guitar? My first guitar? Mm-hmm. Uh, when I told my mom I wanted to... I didn't ask what you said to your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, bitch. This is how it's going to go. This is how this interview is going to go. You don't tell me about your mom. <laughs> now, uh, when I first wanted to play, I and was serious about it, not because my dad made me, I... Uh, Told my mom I wanted to play, and she bought me a Series 10. It's red and orange. Ooh. I loved it. I That's ended up cool giving guitar. it to a kid who wanted to learn, because it was just like a $100 guitar. Right. But it, it was sturdy and stayed in tune good and everything. Then my mom wanted to learn to play, and she went out and bought like an eight $900 Fender Malibu. Oh, those <laughs> things would, are cool. And she played it about half hour. <laughs> I was like, hey, yeah, they're not for me. Here, 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 here's Fender Malibu. Here, David. That's just Enjoy my how, my memory of it. It may have went different. <laughs> it may have been mom might hear that. I bought that for you, you little turd. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember you wanted to learn. And you still have that one too. That's oh cool yeah, that's guitar. that's my favorite guitar. Fender Malibu. What year is it? Oh, you asked me too quick. What year is it? Eighty something. I don't something. remember. That's, I've seen Elvis play a Fender Malibu before. Like as much as I love. It's just a Fender Dreadnought guitar, but it's got a Stratocaster neck looking neck on it, head on it. Strat, yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool guitar. That's my one. Out of all the guitars, I've got guitars that are worth a lot more. But that's the one, like, if there was a fire and you got time to get one, I would get that's that one. That's the one you'd grab? Just uh, sentimental. As <laughs> I, I'm, long as I can remember, that's been in my life. And I, everywhere I went, I went to college, and Mom uh, let me take, I took it with me, you know. It's always been around. And the Ovation Breadwinner. I, I actually had... That's a really... Yeah, that's, that's what uh, Lynn Campbell played. And I think it's a real wild-looking guitar. Glenn that was, Campbell played one? Uh-huh. The Rhinestone Cowboy. He made Ovation popular. Glenn hmm. Campbell. I did not know that. Oh, yeah, he was always in their ads. And, but anyway, my dad had an Ovation Breadwinner, white, and it was beautiful. I played... It was pretty much mine, even though it was dad's. But, you know... Like Brian played it when I played me. The guy I was talking about Chops earlier. Uh-huh. He played it when I played in a band with him. Uh, my dad let someone borrow it, and they flat out wouldn't give it back. And my Fender Bandmaster amp, the really? person wouldn't give it back. And me and Brian and Shanks and a few of my friends went Gonna to the throw dude's down. House. <laughs> I wasn't leaving there without give it. Give me my shit back. We went and you know knocked on the door. We were young kids, but. We knocked on the door, and he opened the door. And was like, oh, yeah, let me grab that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when he quickly saw. And then I sold it to our buddy Tyler, the people. That, who passed away. I sold it to his dad, and 
worked its way back around. Yeah, I it. got it back. Was um, it a gift? Hmm? It was a gift, wasn't it? Well, his da- Tyler's dad, Chains, asked him, what do you want for your birthday? And Tyler said, I want you to give, David's give David's guitar back to guitar back. <laughs> And he for my Chains, birthday. He's yeah. got tons of guitars. He, did. he didn't care about that guitar. And for, so for Tyler, for his birthday, he got his dad, his daddy to give me a guitar and amp. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I'm thinking that's the same year like his dad. He he got a cool gift, too. I think he got him that white Jeep. You remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah, But, yeah, so that guitar has left me on two occasions in my life, but it always came back. And now it's sentimental. If you love something, set it free. They go anywhere from two to $4,000. I will never let any one of my guitars go. There's been times where I'm like, man, I could use two to $4,000, but I can't do it. Can't get rid of the breadwinner. <laughs> nope. So uh, I think we're... Uh, about ready to wrap things up, what do you think? For the evening? Have we given the people enough information for the day, for the night, wherever you may be? Probably have. We've enjoyed our time with you. Now let's talk another 20 minutes. Another 20 minutes? Yeah. Hell yeah, let's do it. Woo! Burning the midnight oil. Woo, we're going to talk all night. Party time. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you and good night. I've grown weary of this conversation. All I'm still trying to look welcome. up ovation breadwinners. Oh, welcome. <laughs> Who else played an ovation breadwinner? Huh? Who else plays an ovation breadwinner? Aldi Miola? He's a jazz musician. Ovation Only a holes listen to jazz. Oh, this is just ovation people, not the breadwinner in particular. The breadwinner looks funky. There's a breadwinner and the deacon. They're the same guitar, basically. You think they got like that little weird cutout at the bottom so you could like sit it on your thigh or something? I don't really know. I, it that would make almost the most looks like a BC Rich, but not as ugly. <laughs> looks a little warlocky. Yeah, they're pretty cool with guitars. They're definitely unique. So much squeaking. That's what happens when you do radio from a basement. Yeah, we broadcast from an undisclosed basement. Secret location. <laughs> You'll never it's find it. Forty thousand leagues under the seas. <laughs> no man dare journey, except for David. Yeah. <laughs> so what? What shall we take away oh, from we're this not episode? Ending? Oh, I'm like, what is? But you said What's going end, on? Talking about guitars. From Just going this show? off on a tangent. Yeah. Ah, uh, I really like the point we talked about earlier. Instead of getting down about someone passing away just remember what they did with the good life. yeah absolutely always look on the bright side of life keep on the bright side of life i don't know what i'm just making <laughs> i'm just winging it some eric idol yeah i think that's the the takeaway yeah i mean it sucks that people pass away and it happens to all of us but you look at the legacy and things they've done yeah. offers some comfort there's some great legacies out there. Tom Petty was only the most recent that leaves us far too soon. Yep. Young man, he will be missed. All right, guys. We'll catch you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Egg Timer Hour. On WP3W. Good night.